So hello and welcome to my Truckfest 2016 video. So last week I went to Truckfest Peterborough and decided to make it into this sort of a video so you guys can enjoy it. It's my first ever sort of vlog if you can call it that so I hope you enjoy it. And yeah this is my experience of Truckfest 2016 Peterborough. First stop was the Renault stand. So this is there were loads of Renault range tees. So there was at least twenty. You see, all lined up along, and I found it really cool because this uh, truck is actually coming very soon for Euro Truck when the uh, French DLC arrives. So it's really cool to get behind the not get behind the wheel, but sit behind the wheel and uh, sort of check it out. next stand that I visited was the Volvo stand, so at, um, at their entrance they had a beautiful silver 540 brake horsepower McLaren Honda sort of skinned up Volvo, it looked really nice in the flesh. Um, moving on, they also had a fully gold, as you can see here, fully old FH16, which is a bit mental, 750 brake horsepower at the top of the range, it was just really cool. So what you can see here is a sort of a crash simulator that Volvo put on on their stand. So it was a cabin from a truck, no engine or anything, just taken off and it was on this sort of tilting platform that you can see there. And the idea was is to show you the importance of seatbelts and it's really cool to get on board and uh, you know, it's quite, you know, it's showing you how important seatbelts are. So one of the highlights for me on truck fairs and truck shows is actually getting inside the trucks. I find it really cool that uh, you drive all these trucks in the game and then you sit in them in real life. You feel like you're at home and it's just amazing sitting in them, like all, feeling all the materials in real life. It was just really nice to sit in this Volvo and uh, yeah, some of the best trucks ever. I got to sit in the FH and an FM as you can see here. And they also had a nice FMX, which you will see in a second. So opposite the Volvo stand, they also had a Volvo VNL, which is really kind of cool to see. It's uh, from the Netherlands, it's got an NL plate, but nice to see at Truck Fest, and because I drive them in uh, American trucks. So. so here we are at the Mercedes stand. So Mercedes had a pretty good stand, as you see, quite a range of trucks there. They even had a police truck, and they also had a family sort of activity centre in the minute in the middle. 
Uh, but yeah, here you see, I'm getting into a Mercedes Actros, and the morning that I went to Truck Fest, I was actually driving an Actros in Euro Truck, just getting the mood from trucking basically, and it was really nice to step in it, and as I said, I felt at home sitting in it, and it's so nice to actually, as I said, feel the material, sit in the seats, and uh, yeah, get that 4D experience. So moving on from Mercedes, you have the Iveco or I Iveco, Iveco, however you want to say it. They have much of a standard, they have any uh, sort of um, merchandise or anything, but it's nice to see the trucks there because they need some really nice ones. So as you can see here, we are at the Scania stand. That was one of my favourite stands of Truckfest this year. They just had some amazing trucks there, the Scania T, some amazing artwork, and you should have seen the interiors. I didn't actually get any video, but it was really cool. I also met up with Stephen Kibberton, another streamer with Squirrel, you may know him. Uh, he spoke to me whilst I was filming this little piece here, so it was nice to uh, speak to him and meet him. And they also went to the Scania shop, and they also gave me a free calendar, which you can see in a second if the video loads. Any second now. Yeah, here you go, they gave me that free calendar for getting some merchandise and stuff, but it was a really good stand. I recommend you go in there at the next truck fest if you go. Then we go Monster Car Crushing with Swamp Thing. Your chance also to ride in a Monster here at Truck Fest 2016. No wonder Iveco says its day, new daily delivers the absolute driving pleasure. Three nights sleep. The highway spec this trailer is packed full of features as standard, including uh, Iveco's unique drive style evaluation system, which is a clever bit of kit carrying around the centre. It's the Dakar track winners today at Iveco. Uh, competing, completing the Iveco parade, we have the Rally Spec Iveco Tracker from Petronas. Team. No truck team uh, within the team was outside the top 15 for the entire Dakar. The team held the lead in the overall standings for an amazing seven days. The team was made up of 50 people from six different nationalities and 17 trucks. And we get landed with the Italian. Brilliant. Anyway, uh, the car's on the road. And in the race it had three Iveco uh, Power Stars and two Iveco Trackers. One of which you see before you. Hey, it's great to see you in the arena once again, you two. Are, are you having a ball this weekend? I am having a big old ball, but I really want to drive that green truck over there. The green? <laughs> Everybody wants to drive that. <laughs> you having a good time there, yeah? Yeah, we always have a good time when we're over here. We just, uh, you know, always ready for the unpredictable weather. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, it's it's staying off. Because what's it like in North Carolina at the moment? Oh, it's 80 degrees and humid. You're about to sweat yourself to death. Really? And you're missing it? Uh, I'm not missing it. You're not missing it? No, uh, 75 is good for us. This weather here messing up my hair though. See it blowing my hair. It's, it's, my, it's just been a lot of time on this hair, Dave. We can't say anything about hair because I was watching y'all's news program and apparently a UK guys spend like 40000 on their hair a year. And this one guy was like, yeah, I go and I cut my part in my hair because my hair has to be big. Just look at Dave and Jim, you can tell 40000 a year right there. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic, and if you would like to go and grab yourself an autograph and a photograph with uh, both of those, uh, you can do it, it's over at the uh, Celebrity Zone. And Lisa Kelly from the Ice Road Truckers. <laughs> Woo! Lisa, my darling, how are you? I'm wonderful. You had a good night last night? Yes. Good, excellent, I had a great day yesterday. You were so busy in there yesterday. It was very busy, but I had a lot of fun, and we got to meet lots of awesome people. Okay, and you did uh, you did rather well on the uh, the challenge yesterday afternoon. I did all right. Yeah, we did we did all right. Yeah, I think you won that one, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Okay. By a country mile. Todd, how are you, my man? I'm good, buddy. How are you? Yeah, very good. Your first time to the UK? Oh, it's, yeah, it's my first time. And how is it? Oh, it's awesome. It's a, but what happens when things go wrong and things break? What do you do? Because you're a lot a lot of the time you're on your own. You are on your own out there, and you have to figure it out, and you just learn different tricks to get it to work, or you wait for someone to come along. That's it. That's all you got. I mean, it's quite desolate out there, isn't it? It's very desolate. No phone service. Hardly any trucks going by. Nothing. And how long How long is the season? What is it, about three or four months? Yeah, I think it, it depends on the weather, of course, but it can usually gets cold enough around January and it, until it melts. Right, and you're hauling just everything that those people have. Why do they live there? I mean, why would you want to live there? I don't know, but this one person came up to my producer and was like, you make it look like we live in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, what's your definition of middle of the nowhere? It's to drive across the ice. And I just want Money? To, yeah, and I just want to let you know that once you, get, once you deliver that load of food supplies in the communities, to see the people's reaction and the little kids' reaction, how excited they are to see you that you're, they're bringing them what they need, makes it all worthwhile. A drive, are they uh, small? Yeah, I actually got to drive that one around the stadium like four times yesterday. And those trucks are, I, I, I think if I had to drive that down the highway all day long, I think I'd fall asleep at the wheel because that's how comfortable that thing is. Okay, because I mean the ones that you drive are actually quite small inside, aren't they? Yeah, they're, you know, they're really small. You got, you got loud motors and loud exhaust and you got 18 gears to shift and everything you do. So riding in that thing was like riding in a Cadillac. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, brilliant. Well, if you'd like to jump back into the vehicles, then we'll take you back to the celebrity zone. No worries. Tom, Lisa, thank you very much, darling. And we'll see you a bit later on. Daff as ever put on a really good show, they had a really good merchandise set, they even had Euro Truck in their uh, sort of trailer that they had, like people set it, well they got a G27 set up, little children's have a go on it, it's really got, I didn't actually have a go, um, but yeah, it was really nice to go in there. Like, I also got to sit in a Daff XF, which was also really nice, and once again, getting to feel the seats and everything, it was nice, that one on the left that you see there, uh, I got some close ups in a second, but yeah. A really good stand from that. So it's not only European trucks at Trekfest, we also had a complete row of American 
traps, which is really nice to see. There was some Kenworth W900, so I could compare it to like real life from our Let's Play and things. If you haven't checked it out, but the interior is just so different. It's such a different environment around the American trucks to the European trucks, but it's cool to see them there. You also had, I also got a video of a P Talk starting up, and it sounds so similar to the game. It's, it's really weird, but yeah, take a listen to this. So it's also really nice to see Eddie Stobot there, they also had a uh, stand on. Uh, they had some demonstrating on putting the uh, wraps on the trucks. I didn't actually get to see them, but as you can see some of the process there, they take the dormers and stuff off. And as you can see here, in one of the sort of shed things they had, near where you met all the celebrities, they had RC trucks driving around. So people brought in their own uh, RC trucks, they made a track, and they were driving them around, which was really nice. And that, and that got me thinking actually. Um, well, obviously, I couldn't have a go because there are people, their own people, they brought them themselves. But wouldn't it be cool to have a simulator's uh, RC truck? That'd be a really nice bit. I'm guessing they're really expensive. So after we visited all the truck dealer stands, we had a look around the personal trucks, the trucks that people bring in to get judged, and so this is where you see all your really nice customised trucks, as you can see in front of you.
So at this point, some of the trucks were starting to leave, so we decided to leave also. But it was a great day at Truckfest. I really enjoyed myself. I'm definitely going back if I can next year. It was just amazing. And if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure you click that like and why not subscribe for more? Because I'm guessing most of you are new uh, to the channel. We do a lot of uh, simulator games, mostly trucking. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you head over to the channel. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you.